in um, traditional Theravadan Buddhism, based on some Abhidhamma concepts, the idea of the last thought moment developed. And from that, the idea that the last thought moment that you have will determine the circumstances which you were born into. Okay. Now, several things need to be discussed here. The first one is there is nowhere in the Tipitaka, there's nowhere in the Buddha scriptures, the Pali scriptures, where this is mentioned. Now, we know from reading the sutras that the Buddha sometimes attended upon people who were dying. Now, you would think if the last thought moment was important, the Buddha would have brought up that subject at that time, but there's nowhere where he did that. So, although I think we can say that the doctrine of the last thought moment is a Buddhist idea, it does not originate from the Buddha himself. So we have to look at where it came from. Okay? Now, I, I may be wrong here, um, and you, somebody can contact me if I am, but I know nowhere in the Abhidhamma Pitika where this idea is mentioned either. Huh? Now, the Abhidhamma Pitika, when, when people use the word Abhidhamma, they're actually, without knowing it, they're referring to a, a, a body of literature written over a thousand years. And in that body of literature, we get ideas that have developed uh, and so on. But uh, when I'm using the word Abhidhamma now, I'm referring to the Abhidhamma Pitika, which is a collection of books which are part of the Pali Tripitaka. To the best of my knowledge, the idea of the last thought moment is not to be found there. It is to be found in later Abhidhamma literature. I think, um, uh, well, I'll deal with that in, the, in a moment. The earliest uh, evidence I know of the idea of the last thought moment is to be found in the Melinda Panna which dates from hmm, perhaps three or four, maybe 500 years after the Buddha. So in the Melinda Panna, Nagasena, who is supposedly a, an Arahat, he says that if you've done evil all your life, but in the last moments before you die you think of the Buddha, then you will have a positive uh, rebirth. That's a pretty problematic uh, claim, but that, to the best of my knowledge, is the earliest version of the concept of the last thought moment. Then we, when you get to later Abhidhamma literature, particularly the commentaries of Buddha Gosa, then this doctrine seems to be fully formed. Now it's important to remember that Buddhism was not, and is not, a static system. It has certain concepts, foundational concepts, and over a series of time people have interpreted them and added to them and taken them to their logical conclusions, sometimes taken to them to their illogical conclusions. But all of that is a part of Buddhism, but uh, the foundations of the Buddhist teaching are the, the, his ideas themselves. Some of these later ideas that developed in later centuries, some of them are quite good, but not all of them. Or some of them are not really a logical um, development from the earlier teachings. Huh? We need to take that into account. Now, when we look at the Buddha's understanding of human consciousness, we find something rather interesting. That the Buddha tended to for the most part, restrict himself to empirical knowledge. And by that I mean that which is accessible to my senses. He generally restricted himself to what can be seen, heard, touched, smelled, felt, and thought about. Huh? In other words, he, he wasn't a very speculative thinker. 
Uh, and when he talked about consciousness, it's quite interesting how he described consciousness. He described consciousness by how you can be aware of it. And he called the processes of thought vijnana sota. Sota means a stream. Hmm? So he talked about the stream of consciousness. Now when I close my eyes and look at my thought processes, that's pretty much what I see. It's like sort of a flow. One thought flows into another and that reminds me of something else and then uh, then I daydream about what I'm going to do tomorrow and that is interrupted by another series of thoughts and so on. And it goes like that. It's a flow. But when we get to later Abhidhamma literature, we see that the Abhidhamma does not see consciousness as a flow. It sees it as a, a, a string or a succession of completely independent thought moments. Hmm? Now, how did this idea develop? Uh, I don't know. But probably it developed from the Buddha's idea once the Buddha said, I know of nothing that changes quicker than the mind. In that it is hard to give a uh, an example of how fast it changes. Now that's a pretty empirical statement also. Yes, when, when I turn my attention inside, it seems my mind, my thoughts are changing all of the time and quite rapidly. So I imagine that Abhidhamma thinkers took that to an extreme. That the mind consciousness is not a flow, but rather dot, 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 dot hundreds, a succession of independent, discrete thought moments arising and passing away very quickly. Huh? So in one version of this understanding is you have a flow of consciousness. In another one you have something like a string of pearls, each of them independent going along. And that led to the idea that the nature of each of these will be different. One will be kusala, one will be more at kusala, whatever. But the last one, the last one in the sequence, just before you die, whatever is in that will determine how you are reborn. And consequently we have the idea of the, the, the significance of the last thought moment in determining the quality of our new life in the next life. Okay? It's a very interesting theory, but I emphasize again, I see, I can find no evidence for this idea in the teachings of the Buddha himself. Now, that, so that's the theory. Is there a problem with this idea? Maybe the Abhidhammakists were correct. Maybe consciousness is not a rapid flow like a river. Maybe it's these little independent thought moments, possible. But if it was, this raises one extremely important question. And that is this. So I've lived a basically, if we summed up my life, we'd say it's basically a good life. But I was in a great deal of pain when I died. I, I was confused. There was a relevant of fear. And so my last thought moment was negative. I have a negative rebirth. So my whole future is not determined by my whole past, what I did, what I said over a period of 50 or 60 years, but by one second. And each of these thought moments is supposed to be extremely rapid. That's rather problematic to me. My understanding of Kama is it's the sum total of your conscious and, and intentional thought, speeches and actions that will have an impact, not a determination, on your, uh, your future. So if you look at it like that, this theory is, first of all, it's not really um, accessible to my experience. 
The idea of the flow of consciousness, yes, yeah, something like that I, I seem to notice when I look at my thoughts. But I've never been able to see individual thought moments rising and passing so rapidly. That's not in my experience. And I doubt whether it's in your experience too. Now I've met people who have studied the Amitabha who tell me when they go into deep meditation they can actually experience these things. I've got my doubts. I think it's more likely that they're reading into their experience what they have read in later Abhidhamma writings. Uh -huh. So that's what I have to say about on this subject. I think that um, the concept of the last thought moment has logical, experiential and moral problems associated to it. And most importantly of all, there doesn't seem to be anything like that in the Buddha's early teachings.